remember you. If you knew the daddy, you will certainly know the son. And we have great memories of the boss man. Over in Bonnie's and everywhere else on this land, for us that know him, and for those of you who didn't know him, enjoy him. But this is John Foley, the spin of his daddy. He's going to do a little poem for us, a little presentation, whatever. Give John a big round of applause. Bless for the occasion. And the best of order, please. Shh. It's taller than treason. John Foley in the big hand. Come on now. No, but you John. Oh, you see, lads, the whole trouble with me is this. Uh, I was always a little bit backward. You see, uh, about going forward. Uh, and why I do not know, uh, some people that says I was shy, uh, and others says I was a little bit slow. Uh, and my father, he blamed my mother, you see, for hearing me a lazy son. Uh, but she made him not to thought his spawn, not his home rod. <laughs> you see, I had me eye on Mary Ann now for 18 years or so. And the only thing that held me back was in case she said no. The problem was, oh, you had turned her down before, in her younger days. And I would tell you, why not that she can't be better look on the writing? So the only thing that's hard on the place. <laughs> got a point contact with this fella. Oh, an expert in these things, who swore to me he had a plan, and I had to go on about the rings. I tell you now, for he says, if you follow my yet a woman plan, in a couple of weeks or so, boy, she'll be yet out your hand. <laughs> Now, to see, the next thing that you see her, you hurry a lot of heat. Oh, have a good look at her now, you see, there might be something that she need. Maybe, you know, a scarf for her neck, you see, or something for her hair. I'm sure if you like the way the thing is going, we take it on from there. <laughs> God, you wouldn't believe it. Next day, I'm going to go for a pint. And here come Mary Ann, boy, she pedaling on the bike. Uh, and just as we were meeting, oh, come this great big truck. I uh, nearly blew the cause right off her. Oh, yeah, Ray, good luck. <laughs> I tell you now, uh, as far as I could see, she was fairly well covered up now from her head down to her knee. And it was there and then the high spider. What a man could buy for a woman that he loves. She was sitting right in front of me. She wasn't wearing gloves. <laughs> and all the town of on Thursday, I got the bus up there from Killan. The boy did love, you see, the first part of the plan. I just told my mother how I was getting, and could she recommend the kind? She said, you might you better buy a pair for yourself, and I'll be always worried in mine. <laughs> oh, she says, then I'll go with you. You might need me to try them on. Oh, sure, that wasn't really hard to the pan, you know, but sure, I said, you better pay along. <laughs> we'll go in that little draper stuff, she said. That's only fed like vickers. Sure, I've got an awful way for a pair of pants. Uh, that's what people now call knickers. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing. When I went into the shop, I was completely mesmerized. And when the shopkeeper asked me then, I didn't know her size. I <laughs> said, sir, I didn't feel like an awful idiot, you know. I hadn't got a clue. I said to him, God, boy, she had me there, all right, which is about a seven in the show. We <laughs> eventually got a pair anyway, you see, about her size. Now, as far as I could tell, oh, a lovely little leather pair, now, with a little tape and leather spell. <laughs> Just as we were leaving, we got us all a man's pair on the ship, and I remember what my mother said about them was from myself. <laughs> I go home on a racy punch, and I took me man's advice, and I stashed on the remainder of a bottle of old spice. I says, I'm out ah, here at the shop. She says, the boat there on the bay. Jesus, when they went to cook the feckin' gloves, and they picked the knickers up instead. <laughs> sure, should I let the house of powders punch down, you see, now her lies in my door. And I get the more wake, you know, pushing her start on the run. And I go up to Mary Ann's house to see how you went she was alone. And so I parked the bike on the lane in case the handy bars were home. And I kind of signed up to the door like this, you see, yeah, and on it I did not. And when she came out, I says, No, Mary Ann, here's a little present that I got for you. Then I take her shop. And I hand her to her with a little love hat on the top. And I tell you one thing, 
And she opened up that present, she didn't look one bit pleased. <laughs> it didn't be a smile in there before, it quickly was erased. <laughs> That's the thing, she said, she doesn't like the gloves. And I felt an awful dread because her face is starting to redden up now, you see, and the hair stood on her head. He says, I, I like them anyway, when I saw them on the shelf. They will show what I like so much about up here for myself. <laughs> You see, uh, when I be cold, uh, we always wear my mothers. And I uh, <laughs> sure I knew it wasn't fair. We always wear an horse seat if it wasn't wrong to be fair. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, when I said that, the face made me throw off her. <laughs> and she hit me such a bit and knocked me off my feet and I lost me fishing by new cap and he brought him row of heat. <laughs> and I tell you, I went down that lane on the bike, and I hopping off each ditch, and the ears are still ringing for the roars of that old bitch. <laughs> and if I ever make the expert, I tell him to take his plan, and he can stick it up where the sun won't shine, and the hell with there he is! <laughs>